good morning. Welcome to the morning session uh, uh, of today's uh, of meeting. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Pranay Goel, and uh, we have uh, two. Uh, we have three talks. Two of them are uh, formal research talks, and one of them is a discussion session. Uh, we'll start straight away with uh, Professor Niloy Gangli, who's at the Department of Computer Science at IIT Kharagpur, and uh, he's going to talk to us about opinion and dynamics in social networks. So, yeah. so it's, it's that stu students know more about social network than faculty, so it's justified. <laughs> Yeah, so this, uh, uh, and this is a series of uh, uh, works which we did in the last uh, three, four years. So Abir and Bidisha, two of my PhD students. Shorangshu is my colleague in IIT Kharagpur. And Manuel and Isabel are two faculty members in Max Planck Institute. So... Uh -huh. So what we see is, uh, this we all know, activities over social network and social media. You have uh, news spread in Twitter, video becomes viral in YouTube, uh, product reviews and sales in Amazon, a user gains recognition in Quora, post on several events become viral. So these are all, roughly we are familiar with it. And what we... <laughs> understand or what we feel that these events are observation of complex dynamic process. So these are not simple things. You cannot say that this thing will become viral and this thing will not become viral. So what will be a hit and what is a miss is not so easy to understand. So, so just to put it in perspective, so there are complex interactions and that is has both these aspects of temporality and con contextuality. And with this uh, concept in mind, I will take, talk about two different uh, processes. One is information propagation, another is opinion propagation. So the difference roughly is that information propagation will just deal with temporal data. And while in opinion propagation, we'll deal with the content as well as the temporal data. <sighs> So, so the challenge to understand this diffusion process is that understanding which pieces of information are getting through and which are ignored. Okay. And we need accurate modeling as well as accurate forecasting. So these are the things which we would... Uh, so one of the mathematical devices which can capture such diffusion processes like temporal point processes where we model arrival rate of different process. And it can also be sufficiently complex. It can uh, capture various phenomena of interest like text, etc., in the social network. So, so again, just to, uh, I guess this was this is not needed here. But what's the temporal point process? A random process whose realization consists of discrete events localized in time. And uh, you can have a simple Poisson process where the intensities are, uh, it's, it's mu and uh, its intensity is indep independent of history and it's uniform random occurrence. Time interval follows some exponential distribution. Typical uh, queuing theory, we have done this many years back. Then there is this inhomogeneous Poisson process where you can have something like DT, which is it's not like uh, uh, constant over time, but it's, it's varying over time. But anyway, still the intensity is independent of history, like, like we are not taking history into consideration. Or you can have terminating processes where you just add something. So, so these are the things which I guess modelers, scientists, physicists, mathematicians, uh, and now we computer scientists are also trying to do things and then there is a uh, there is something which we are using it's called hox process so hox process is something like it is self exciting process that uh, uh, so you have uh, you actually when you are calculating the intensity you are taking the effect of history so this can have various functions i will come to those functions but essentially we are taking 
the effect of history and obviously uh, we can think in various ways that the history's effect will become slowly, it will slowly die down. So something like this which we will try to bring. So with this background in mind, uh, uh, I will talk about uh, two important problems, the hashtag diffusion problem and the opinion dynamics problem. So hashtag diffusion in, in uh, social media. So, there are two types of models. So obviously, uh, as you understand, social computing has uh, survived. Uh, social com computing has survived on a large part on diffusion, etc. These are the modeling questions which social computing has really taken into consideration. So, it, is it new? Obviously, it is not new. So there are temporal models and there are feature engineering models. Just to tell feature engineering models means you are seeing the feature of the hashtag, whether the hashtag is big, small, uh, uh, whether the hashtag contains informal words, formal words. So, so all sorts of NLP techniques has been used to tell that uh, the hashtags and the users who are tweeting it. So all sort of feature engineering has been done to tell whether the hashtag would actually become popular or not popular. So there has been a lot of work. I have just uh, put two recent works. So uh, we are not going into this model. We are not going into this model because, uh, <coughs> again, all this, so what is seen really in social computing or social network, these features quickly change. And it changes in the lifetime of the hashtags. So these things can work for some, but it's, it's, it has been heavily criticized also that way. So, so the other things is the temporal model. So this is one of the first models which came AAA in AAA 14. Yeah, Paravasi was, is also an author of this paper. So which, which model single tweet propagation dynamics? It's not that there is hashtag and there is single tweet. So it, uh, it models single tweet dynamics. And uh, what can be seen is that it doesn't scale. There is a, there is a non-convex objective function, which is there. The Hox process also is a very new thing. Uh, uh, yep, I think papers begin to come in computer science domain from 14, 13, 14. So 15, you have this Hox process based models, where also single tweet propagation dynamics is. Uh -huh. uh, is taken into consideration. And again, there has been. Uh, the concept of long-term forecasting, like if you remember the old voters model sort of thing, where essentially we were thinking about uh, getting uh, uh, whether there will be stability, whether there will, there will be consensus, whether there will be, um, yeah, these sort of questions we always used to ask in the old voters model, if you remember. So the objective functions cannot be, <laughs> so in, in our term, if I tell that it's, it's, it turns out to be an NP-hard problem. It's, you cannot have a linear sort of uh, uh, solution. So if you, and if you think from gradient descent point of view, there are multiple gradients and it, you don't know how to hit the, hit the um, main gradient. So that's how it goes. Okay. And as I have told that uh, this heavily depending on past uh, activities actually model fails if users' activity changes frequently. So what we've understood is uh, uh, what, again, perhaps our experience in social network, etc., which we're seeing that if you consider th there are two entities, a single tweet and a hashtag. So you will see that hashtags becomes popular. Even a single tweet can become popular, but there are relationships between a hashtag and a hashtag and single tweet. And hashtag actually reflects the story better. So you will see always some hashtags trending because that hashtag is actually telling the story better. Okay. And so what is a hashtag? Now just if we step back and think, hashtag is basically a collection of tweet chains. So this is tweet number one, tweet number two, tweet number three, and hashtag is basically 
a collection of tweets in. And as soon as you think that these tweets, you, as soon as you think in the perspective of tweets and not hashtags, you begin to think these tweets are actually independent of each other, which is not true. Okay, which is not true. So, <laughs> so there is always two things which are going on. If you just again uh, see your own experience, think over that hashtag diffusion in social media. There are two types of uh, processes which are going on. One is intra hashtag, means hashtag tweet reinforcement. Means if a if a hashtag becomes popular, a tweet can become popular, and vice versa. Uh, vice versa, uh, that a, if a tweet become popular, the hashtag can also become popular. So this thing goes on. And there is always some inter-hashtag competition. So there are some hashtag-hashtag competition. We see when there is some events which are coming up. This we will see that initially there may be various hashtags which are competing against each other. And in the long run, one hashtag may survive. So there is inter-hashtag competition or there can be events where these hashtags, com these hashtags uh, compete with each other for a long, long time. Like I will give you an example. Uh, you may be all, all remembering that Black Lives Matters was an interesting, hashtag, important hashtag which went on. Uh, and parallelly, actually, Police Life Matter was also going on. So these two hashtags continuously fought with each other for a long time. So, so what is happening? Basically, there is this intra-hashtag concept and there is this inter-hashtag concept. Okay, and <laughs> yeah, I, I've just tried to put some uh, uh, who likes Leonardo Capri. Okay, so so all of you who like uh, uh, like him, for you this is like a collection of various tweets which goes on if you see the movie reprint. Okay. <laughs> so now, again, going, coming back to the modeling concept, see what happens. So this is a hashtag. This is a tweet which is unpopular. So this is first time it is uh, posted. And then after some times, after a long time, somebody is retweeting. But after some times, this retweet becomes much more frequent. Okay. And why this is happening? Because there is a popular tweet which has been tweeted after this, which itself is not only becoming popular, it is making this tweet also popular. So, so there is a, a hashtag tweet re, re, reinforcement which is always happening. That hashtag becoming popular, tweet is becoming popular. This way the hashtag tweet reinforcement is always happening. Yeah. Yeah, so tweet tweet reinforcement is the, essentially it is tweet tweet reinforcement, but we are thinking it's a, for uh, yeah for the hashtag. Okay. So then, and if you see this, uh, this two competing tweets going on, so there will be time windows. In one time window, one tweet is becoming popular. At other time window, other tweets are becoming popular. So this way the dynamics goes. Okay. So with this concept in mind, have our model large margin point process where there is competition model which is uh, which we do through some constant likelihood estimation and uh, there is the hashtag tweet reinforcement model which takes into the consideration the arrival rate process into consideration and, and combines them. Let us see this. So if you see this arrival rate formulation, this is uh, so this is uh, the rate, uh, estimated rate, which, uh, which is a combination of background rate and the kernel. It's this kernel I have shown you, this kernel is showing that, mm -hmm. the kernel is showing mm -hmm. uh, its dependence on independence on previous tweets or previous instances, its dependence on previous instances. So, uh, so, and where in this kernel you are also putting something called popularity index to understand how popular tweets impacts not so popular tweets and vice versa. So this uh, this thing is put into consideration. And these are the two things which you have to estimate, alpha and beta, which you do through some log likelihood, uh, uh, through some log likelihood um, estimation model. So uh, I, I'm not going into the detail, but what we can show that if we do this log likelihood, the estimation can be optimal. And this lambda h is again 
put into the constraint of this lambda h minus lambda t should be always greater than 1 if n h is greater than n h n h means if at that time window if at that time window uh, h is popular than h dash then this lambda h has to be greater than lambda h dash so this constraint we put into that log likelihood estimation so this is the form this is the um, basic uh, basic uh, theory with behind it the, the, so and then we again did it on a lot lot of data oscars stem primary mtv awards nepal earthquake bbd okay big billion day copa america cup twc world world cup and then uh, the evaluation process was seeing the forecasting hash protocol uh, and rank prediction of competing stacks so so one is another thing always we know about this forecasting problems that forecasting many times is very good but it fails miserably when there is a jump so forecasting has this typical problem that on the average it is going doing good but it is not doing good when we really need it because at jumps we need it so then we uh, we see uh, we see that um, so so i'm just putting the result of jump so uh, the where you see that for the jump statistics actually ours is performing much 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 better than the others <sighs> okay so this is about information dynamics so let, let me just complicate life a little bit and talk about opinion dynamics and uh, just to give the background again uh, we are very much opinionated on social networks so all of us have a lot of opinion in social network okay and people's opinion about political discourse investors sentiment about stocks brand sentiment and reputation so and everybody is trying to understand what is the opinion of others okay so this is what is going on so again um, uh, there has been um, so information dynamics is a much more well studied subject while opinion dynamics is not so well but uh, but there has been the old school, uh, a lot of old school studies starting from Vota's model, Dick Root's model, if you remember. So all those old physics models has been there. Uh, and, but they are all updated in distinct time and they do not distinguish between latent and expressed opinion. So if you think, actually opinion we are sampling at various points or various discrete points. But there is a latent opinion which is continuously going on and which we may express sometimes may not express so this thing is not taken into consideration and obviously the learning part is a new concept that we want to learn it from data okay so there there was uh, more uh, so if you see there was more importance on focusing on steady state neglecting transient behavior but here actually transient behavior is in real life much more important than steady state behaviors okay so so uh, just to put into context that what is the difference between the other models in the other models we were not talking about graphs as such we were just talking about plain simple modeling uh, without graphs but now we'll take graphs into consideration okay and surely we are utilizing text of the message but that is again small part that you are doing some sort of NLP techniques to understand sentiment from the text okay so now there are two important concepts in so opinion dynamics so there are two things or uh, there are two important influences uh, during a dialogue so one is uh, temporal influence another is another another is informational influence what is temporal influence temporal influence is like uh, like alice is having some temporal in, in influence whenever alice talks others talk okay okay and that really doesn't mean that others are taking alice opinion so alice is triggering some sort of oh, discussion okay if alice talks other talks so so that is what we call as temporal influence while joe talks it's not that others are uh, immediately talking after joe or or everybody pounces upon to talk but joe's, uh, joe's uh, uh, whatever joe says has impact on others 
here we are showing that has impact on Alice. If Joe is, uh, Joe is positive, Alice becomes very positive. If Joe becomes negative, Alice immediately, slowly try to change their opinion. So you, you know these are the things which are also present in the social network. I forget about online social network, this is also present in our day-to-day, -day, daily life, all sorts of conversations. So now, a previous model, we had just the, uh, uh, just the intensity, uh, which was one intensity lambda star t, if you just remember. Here we have intensity of every user, intensity of arrival of every user, lambda star ut, and you have an opinion of that user, x star ut. So we have two, two variables. So now again, if you write the equation, uh, the old equation, I'm looking lambda star OT. So message, uh, so this is user's message intensity, message on our own initiative. So there are two things that if nobody speaks, I speak, that is one thing. And uh, other speaks, then I speak. So there are two concepts. So one is the message on our own initiative, which we think doesn't change for individuals. But when others speak, when others speak, so TI for all other people, all other Vs, okay, all other Vs, and VBU is showing the graph. VBU is showing the graph that uh, uh, whoever is connected with uh, you will be positive, others will be zero. And then you have also the coupled equation of X star U, user's latent opinion, that is uh, maybe the usual opinion. And then you have uh, the informational influence. So, so this concept was very unique that we, talk, we talked about temporal influence and informational influence. This is something very new which people have not talked. So this is the informational influence part which is coming. And again, you have the exponential kernel which goes on. Okay. And you, ha you, you do some sort of sampling, simple sampling to get, uh, get the opinions which, which we think is latent and moving over time and continuous, which is thing is latent and continuous. Okay, and so then you again do this MLE maximum likelihood estimation and you uh, get, uh, you maximize the message sentiment and message time and you get the parameters of all the parameters of the models. You get the estimation of parameters of the model. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah. The, the observables are uh, uh, the opinions of users at various time steps. Express. Oh, expressed opinion. Ex no, that is latent opinion we don't have as observable. So we are thinking that this expressed opinion has been, so we are assuming there is a latent opinion and we are thinking this expressed opinion has been sampled from that latent opinion. Okay. So, so you have uh, now um, real data experiments where you have Delhi uh, Assembly Election Avengers Mayweather versus Picao, yeah, Bollywood Star Accident, U.S. Election. So various cases we take. So this is uh, again uh, the macroscopic forecasting. You are going. Uh, uh, so this is how you are forecasting, and you have taken data up till there, and you are seeing data beyond this. So, so there is one experiment which we do is that we just predict just the pre just the just the step after and we predict a long time prediction. Okay. So, uh, so if you see the long time predictions, uh, so the, so if you see the black one, see it's following long time prediction much better. Okay. So our model actually does very, does very good in short time predictions, but it does, does very good in long time prediction also. Okay. So, so see this, you will see this MSE means, uh, um, basically the error, right? And this is our two models, slant P and slant H. Slant P is considering Poisson process instead of Hox process, while slant H is considering the Hox process. And uh, if you see the rate, so it's this, you are starting here and pre begin to predict, and you pre predict till 10 hours. Our models, the, the Poisson process still becomes bad, but the Hox process stays very good for a long, long time. Hox process prediction stays very good for a long, long time. Okay, so 
Fine. So there are certain issues which are there. One is that uh, this coupling of these two equations, if you see lambda star and x u star, these are, uh, these are semi-coupled, linear and fixed. So they are linear. In reality, they will be non-linear. Okay. In reality, they will be non-linear. It's not that they will be very linearly uh, coupled. So then uh, 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 what we have to do, we have to find this coupling. And as deep learning has come, and this is a good place to use deep learning perhaps, so we capture nonlinearity by using some recurrent, uh, uh, recurrent neural networks. Okay. And now there are some design issues which were there. One is that do we build the entire system with a recurrent neural network, which had, first of all, the, so, so you know, there are a lot of, oh, issues which are coming in the deep learning domain like expressivity issue then uh, training issue if you make the entire social network and put it in a deep learning model you take uh, yeah weeks if not months to train the model which is good okay but uh, uh, perhaps may be avoided. So what we did, we had small RNNs per user. So per users, we did this RNN, and then we stacked it over one another. And give, after the RNN uh, output was coming, it was put into another model. So, so you can see this is how it goes, this alpha and beta, I, I put it here. So these are the things which has to be estimated, the information influence and temporal influence. And this cup put into a embedding history. And this, this has various layers in the RNN, and you get output, uh, you get the opinion and message generation output into the model. Okay, so, uh, yeah, the, the bottom line is the, the error, the mean squared error actually improved by one more layer. So the mean squared error actually improved by one more layer. Okay, so it, uh, previously it was like 0.2, now it has become 0.2, so 0.2 right. Okay. So summarizing, uh, we have the generalized framework that captures popular dynamics on social network. We have the generalized framework that uh, captures popular dynamics on social network. And besides modeling, rigorous experiments over diverse set of data shows that the performance of critical junctions are significantly better. So that is what uh, we can take back from the studies. Okay, so, so this is good. Uh, Next comes that, uh, if you go back, if you remember the original thing, there was, uh, this consists of complex processes or sub processes, and this consists of different users. So this is how things are there. And uh, there is one thing which we have not talked till now. What we have talked till now is all these processes, all these processes are endogenous to the system. That means the, all these processes are endogenous to the system, which means that all the opinions which are expressed, all the opinions which are expressed are generated from the social network. Okay. That is what the basic assumption. If you just think a little bit, that is what the basic assumption, or that was sort of the basic assumption of all old models, like again I am telling the Rotards model, etc. Okay. But in real life, what happens? Real life, there is continuous external, external uh, influences which comes on the social network. Um, newspapers, post articles, um, political parties have IT cell who tries to push content. So there are actually endogenous uh, processes which is going on and exogenous processes which both interact with, with each other and uh, forms the complex process, okay? And so there are organic users who are, uh, and there are actually extrinsic users who are specially there to steer opinions, okay? So keeping this in mind, I, yeah, I'm perhaps presenting too many things, but just I wanted to give an overview of what um, things we are doing. So demarcating exogenous and endogenous opinion diffusion. Okay, so here yeah, we have we have known the voters model, recruits model, and uh, now we have in the last 
in social network we have the biased photos model the linear model this is also our model then slant slant plus the both which we have presented so what is the modus operandi how can you think back that there are opinions there are opinions and uh, and there are opinions of alice there are opinions of david charles Bob, Charlie, and David. So everybody has opinions. This is how, and your opinions are expressed by uh, your opinions are influenced by neighbors. But there are also some exogenous opinion. It's that perhaps Alice is also pushing some exogenous opinions. Okay, it's not that only the opinion which Alice is getting from her, from her neighbors. She is also getting some external influence. She is maybe having some boss. A uh, boss in his IT self who is telling that push this content, so Alice is pushing this content. So then we can think of this that there are endogenous things and there are exogenous uh, points. Okay, and obviously these existing models are uh, don't strive to. So, so the point is one thing again. If you think from a data mining perspective, you can think that okay, let me think in this way that all those tweets which has some link to some web page are external, and all those tweets which are actually uh, all those tweets which are um, which doesn't have any. Mm, uh, a web link are internal. So this is one way you can think and you can try to use some classification clustering algorithms to actually build it. But the problem is that, uh, so, so the problem is say the same thing that New York Times hints at a new trade war, a timely article in new trade war. So the same concept can be the same concept can be external or internal because the first person who is pushing it perhaps has pushed it due to external resource the second person who is seeing is maybe actually forming opinion about it and tweeting about it together so if you i i, I think i uh, i will give you a better example i i was thinking of putting it in the front so see you have breaking campaign campaign manager will not be prosecuted at total joke this is posted by somebody okay and his neighbor our neighbor has sat quit what we you are winning and his neighbor again post this campaign manager won't be prosecuted such a huge disaster now this neighbor is posting because there can be two things why he is posting because of the content that he likes the content and this is coming from some exogenous sources or he is getting influenced by this user and posting it as soon as he is posting the content getting influenced by this user then then uh, uh, there is um, then then it becomes actually endogenous it's not it's not or not it doesn't stay exogenous so what i am telling is the same content can be endogenous and exogenous so then you cannot have some sort of clustering uh, a typical data mining machine learning algorithms to actually do it okay so 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 the content-based clustering will not work. Okay. So now what happens is, can we? So the the issue is, can we demarcate endogenous and exogenous messages through some sort of modeling? And we told we know this type of models, and let us work with slant because slant is our model. So what is this? That again, if I just go back and think of slant, these are the opinions of people which are there, and then you have a maximum likelihood estimation. Okay, if you remember plant models, you have a maximum likelihood estimation through which you are actually calculating the influence of A, B, A, C, and A, D. And there, there are two influences: one is temporal, and another is informational. But essentially, you are calculating this influence. Okay, and uh, so now what happens that this, if there are external, if there are external things, then what will happen? This estimation will not be very good. Just think conceptually that if there are data points inside the data set which doesn't conform to the dynamics of 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 opinion propagation then those data points are bad data points and if you train the model on those data points then the result will be bad okay so this is the basic idea which we have okay so then we'll come to poor estimation and so using this simple fact that 
if we use bad data points, we will have poor estimation. Can we simple fact to demarcate the endogenous and exogenous messages? So what we do, we train, uh, instead of training on the entire thing, we train on a subset, say this subset. Okay, and we see the estimation. Okay, and we see the estimation. And we see, we take various subsets and find out which estimation gives the best result. Okay, which estimation gives the best result? Which estimation should be chosen? Which estimation A should give the best possible this? Now, this best possible is also something tricky where you actually can see, there can be various sort of things which you can see. Best possible means what? Uh, so, but we see that which gives least variance which gives least variance in the result, which gives least variance in the result. Uh, in many literature, so there is some sort of, I am also debating with my student here that why least variance, but in, uh, we could have taken the squared, like even L1 norm, some sort of things we could have taken. But anyway, the bottom line is that least variance works so well and we can actually try with many other things and as soon as you take least variance you know that uh, it allows for closed form calculation also that is what we also need and we can show that this is submodular and it can be easily solvable and if you have a greedy more greedy approach even a greedy approach gives you some sort of approximate gradient Okay, so, so this is organic and extrinsic users. Extrinsic users again influenced by uh, externalities. Organic in users are influenced by more than one users. Okay, and you can see the content can be different, content can be same, but uh, this is how social network performs. So, uh, to the experiments, we see, uh, so what we will see then, that instead of taking the entire data set, if I choose the data points correctly, I should have better prediction. So, that is one way to validate the result that we have actually differentiated between external and internal users. Okay, and then again, we take a lot of data sets and uh, we see that uh, this see the interesting point about this is that uh, the training the error is coming down the error is coming down and the interesting point about this is here we are actually taking a subset of the data not the entire data set we are taking telling that the entire data set is not good a subset of the data set is good and you find the right subset and is train your models on that and and so essentially Slant is actually trained on a much more data set. It is trained on a bigger data set, while it is trained on a smaller data set. Okay, and then also we are performing better in both this count where we the, the jump, also the general error. And this is where if you this is also interesting. See, uh, we have the entire data set which is 100 now you take 90 percent of the data set means we put this as a model parameter that 10 percent of the data is junk or 80 means 20 percent of the data is external external data so in this way around 70 to 90 around to 70 to 90 it seems are good data otherwise it are these are external data source which are coming out. I showed you this example and there is another thing uh, fallout from this that only, not only we understand external data source, we can also understand which are the users who are actually posting external resources. Okay, which are the users who are posting external resources and then, uh, then we, we can try to rank these users that uh, which are the most influential reader users who are posting external resources and you can take all sorts of ranking algorithm starting from page rank uh, degree co closeness and we show that our cherry pick actually has minimum loss it performs the best <coughs> so concluding uh, we on uh, uh, we talk about models of information and opinion dynamics we try to capture the external effects and also the control which is going on on opinion dynamics. And yeah, so again, <coughs> thank you. Thank you for listening and I think I am dot on time. Huh?
Uh, Nilay, so um, going to the last uh, part of your talk, mm -hmm. so you mentioned this extrinsic effects, but I was just wondering, you know, suppose you don't know the whole network. So mm -hmm. suppose only some of the nodes are available to you, other nodes are not available to you, but mm -hmm. those nodes which are not being seen by you is also communicating a lot with the nodes which are being seen by you. Mm -hmm. So now all of those influences are actually endogenous. Yeah, but we are thinking that… So if your thing is exogenous, so would your model be able to capture that or… They, it will classify that as exogenous. No, but given that there's also a lot of give and take, you know, typical the kind of exogenous that you're talking about, so there is just one way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just influencing it but not in turn being influenced by uh, your network. So the fact that now… the uh, example that I am giving, so actually there's a lot of give and take between these nodes. Wouldn't the dynamics be more complex? Would your model… No, but uh, say if you have something like, if you have a network, what you are telling, you have a network and this is an external network which is not given. And there are influences which are coming and going. This is what you are telling. So, so, so understand, first of all, we, uh, hmm? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not one way, I understand that. There is a node here, I don't know whether it's a node. See, the problem is, uh, this is coming here and whether this is going back to this, I even don't know. Means, uh, so, it's difficult to, means, because you have this alpha A, B. This is all, always we are calculating, so we don't know whether B is the, so one way is, building a super node and trying something like this, but even then, uh, I'm not sure whether we can. Just one small thing. Uh, in, in, in one of your models, you had this message uh, uh, sent on her uh, own initiative, which you kept as a constant. Mm -hmm. uh, but wouldn't it be much more realistic to have a distribution for that? Because there's a huge variety in in that initiative. I mean, some of my friends keep doing it, and some just don't. No, but it's quite it, easy to put a. No, but it is it is uh, on. That some something you called. Mm. I just don't. Yeah, know yeah, yeah. Now, but no, no, that is there. I, I thought it was very homogeneous. So what was as a comment? What I will say that I I, I perfectly agree with you that what you are telling. But again, as you understand, you know, this is for each user, okay, it's not… Oh, no, not that one, I think there was some new or something, maybe… Oh, that yeah, this is, this is, each users have an opinion. So, it's not that all users have the same thing. So, you have a distribution of that mu, is it? Yeah, it's u. So, you, it is part to, for a particular user, this is constant. Yeah, constant over time for a particular yeah. user. Yeah. Okay. But it's what I'm telling, if I am, so, so no, this can also be, so what I'm telling, if you are inherently um, not talking much, then you are not talking much. This is not changing. Yeah, this, that's your type. So this is what you are just keeping. The structure of the network on which opinion spreads also matters, right? Hmm. So. Uh, is there any analysis of the structure of the Facebook and Twitter structures? I mean, are there, there must be known results, right? Hmm. How do they differ? See, they are, are they the same? The known results are almost always we know that these are power laws, so there are influences. So, so are so they essentially similar? They are essentially similar. Is WhatsApp the same? Because it seems to be a lot more virulent than the others. I think that is because of ease of use. Because of? Ease of use. Ease of use. Oh. I, I still not, it's, there is, <laughs> no, not. No. And the problem with WhatsApp is the data is not available, so. Data is not available. It, the problem is the data is not available to Facebook also. Okay. So it's, it's, it's so highly encrypted, it is not available. Not available. We'll move on to our next speaker. So, just to give you a last comment on that, actually what have been seen is uh, the, the nature of the content of influence are very different in Facebook and uh, 
Yeah, so the content of influence is different, but, uh, but the dynamics is different or not, I really don't know. But there has been study that for this type of content, Facebook influence more, for this type of content, Twitter influence more. Last number. Last number.